about it makes me happy. Doesn't matter, spring or fall. Barber Bill's where the music is happening. I can't wait till Barber Bill. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait till Barber Bill. I can't wait. I can't wait. Hi. My name's Deborah West, and I'm with the Barberville Pioneer Settlement. I'm the executive director here. And today we're at our Midway Methodist Church, one of my favorite buildings on the property. And I welcome you to come on the tour with us today. You're going to see Joanna Demarest, uh, that's going to share the history of the church. Um, we hear a lot these days about uncertain times, and the people who built this church and the people who saved this church certainly were also working under uncertain times. So I wanted to share just a quick quote from the Bible that says Corinthians 2 verses 5 through 7 is we walk through faith, not by sight. And those folks who worked so hard to build this church and to save it certainly did that. So today we're going to take you on a tour and you're going to learn more about the history and uh, of my favorite building, the Midway Methodist Church. Barberville Pioneer Settlement. This series of videos is a, a, a chance to learn a bit of the history of the buildings that we have here but until the time when you can come back and visit us again. 
this is the Midway Methodist Church. This was the first church that was built here in Central Florida in what became the Barberville area. It was built just down the road, about a mile down, just off of Highway 40. The land was originally donated by J. McBride. Uh, that land was then a part of what became the land near Cemetery Road because he donated the land not only for the church but also for the cemetery. The congregation came together and built this first church in 1872, but it wasn't long before the congregation outgrew that building, and then they had to build this one in 1890. That the services were held in this church up until 1964, and after that, the congregants all kind of scattered to other churches. Fast forward to the early 1990s. At that time, the Florida Conference of Methodist Churches uh, decided to donate the building here to the settlement. At that time, our executive director, Marilyn Breeze, had a dream for this area. Now, um, this property, which was 30 acres, which was part of the Barberville Central High School. In 1976, that high school was then turned into the Barberville Pioneer Settlement for the Arts. And, and Marilyn had a dream. She wanted to take this extra property back here and turn it into a historical village for entertainment and educational purposes as well as for historic preservation. With numerous volunteers, and especially Harriet Boland, who was the chairperson of not only the MOVE committee, but also the fundraising committee, they all came together to raise the funds to be able to make this whole village back here a reality. And not only the church, but now we have 19 historical buildings. But they needed to raise $8,000 in order to just move the church. The whole total restoration, move, and everything would cost a whopping $30,000 to $40,000 in total. So there was a lot of fundraising that had to happen in the meantime. It was unlike the cabin, which we've talked about in previous uh, films, um, where they actually went up to Georgia, they took the house apart uh, piece by piece, put it back together, and then they, um, it was all a move done that way. This building had to be moved en masse. And so on May 10th, 1994, they hooked it up to a tractor and brought it here to the settlement. Any young man who could preach and was willing to ride a horse for weeks over the wild country might become an assistant and then finally a circuit rider. In the early 1800s, a young man could be paid $100 a year and be given his own horse if he was willing to brave the wilds. Francis Asbury traveled some 270,000 miles and preached 16,000 sermons during his 45 years as a circuit rider. Though he died before the time of our church was built, his legacy carried on with the, with the numerous circuit riders that would have traveled over the 400 plus mile circuit that went from Jacksonville to Tampa and back. Along with raising the money, there was a long list of prep work which included removing trees at both where the church was originally and at the settlement, moving power lines along the route, disconnecting the front steps, taking off the bathroom that was built onto the rear of the structure, removing the fence that surrounded the original church and cemetery, and restoring the old site as well as clearing the new site. The settlement even had to send a letter to all the residents along the route to obtain permission to trim the trees, limbs that hung over the road. And finally, the church was ready to be moved. Then it was up to the T.A. Young Blood and Sons Company to underpin the building, place beams to support the structure, then position a roller or wheeled carriage beneath it, and hook up a tractor to pull the structure down the cleared path. Now this is a very simplified description of the process that it takes to move a whole building. But you can get an idea of how large a project this is when you undertake the preservation of a historic building. Now the church and cabin are not the only buildings that have been moved to the settlement. In 
We have also moved the Bridge House, which was the Bridge Tender's House in Astor and along the St. John's River, and is now our Welcome Center. The fire station, which houses our fire engines, but was originally the Gunther Blacksmith Shop in DeLand. The Quarters House, that was moved from New Smyrna Beach. The old Huntington Post Office, which was west of Crescent City. The Pottery Shed, which came to us from Daly on Springs. The H.L. Wynn Commissary, which serves as our country store. Well, it was from Bakersburg. And the Pearson Train Station from just up the road in Pearson. And our most recent addition is the Relay Cabin, which was just down off of Highway 40 and was part of the stagecoach line that went from Volusia to Ormond Beach. Just think of all the logistics it took to bring all of those buildings here. Well, it took months of renovation work on the church after it was moved here to get it ready for visitors. It took over a year to repair the roof, scraping, priming, and painting both the interior and exterior of the building, repairing windows and screens, rebuilding the front steps, rewiring the entire building and the three existing light fixtures, taking up the carpet and refinishing the hardwood floors, and repairing the organ to a usable state. After the restoration work was finished, then it came time to furnish the building. Harriet and Marilyn put together another fundraising campaign whereby you could buy a pew. Donations were taken and each person or family got their name on a plaque which was placed on the pews. Richard and Rhonda, our congregation this morning, uh, could you read a couple of the names of people who donated? Sure. The first um, pew belongs to Flo and Harry Hudak, and this pew belongs to Guy and Fran this year. Wonderful. And I have the honor of reading Hubbard and Antoinette Biggs and Harold Hess. There were many, many people who donated for the pews, and we want to thank them even today for helping us to furnish the building. Now, finally, the church was ready for its second dedication. On May 20th, 1995, a year and 10 days after it was moved, and 105 years after it was built, the Barberville Pioneer Settlement held that second dedication with over 168 people in attendance. They came from as far away as St. Augustine and Jacksonville, and as close as Astor and Barberville. I might even have had some relatives there, as there is a Walker and Demarest, which are my family's names, were on that list. Since that time, 25 years ago, Maryland's dream has come true. We have the village here uh, that surrounds the church. We have, uh, during our spring frolic and fall jamboree, which we do hope to have again this next year, we have music playing here in the church the education of people coming in and seeing what churches were like in the past. Her dream did come true. This church is also used now for weddings. We have, uh, there was one particular wedding that, uh, that was back in 2001, and it was even featured on in the Bun Post magazine. Dale Barnhart and Evelyn Ruffino were married here on April 26, 1997. As both Evelyn and Dale were avid Civil War reenactors, it was only natural that they have a Civil War themed wedding. Evelyn wore an 1860s vintage wedding dress, hoops and all, while Dale was decked out in a Confederate uniform. Dale was a sixth generation Floridian, a past mayor of Pearson and a gun shop owner, while Evelyn was a registered nurse from Pennsylvania. They had men in uniforms from both sides of that conflict in the wedding party, and as Evelyn recalled, it was kind of a North meets South kind of thing. The couple even walked down the steps of the church under an archway of crossed swords. Dale was so pleased with his wedding here that in, years later, after his wife had passed, in her memory, he actually donated the air conditioners that keep our church cool on our hot 
southern summer days. You know, after this ban is lifted for our stay-at-home order during our quarantine, during the COVID uh, crisis that we're having right now, we would really invite you to come and rent our church for your special occasion or your wedding. We have a lot of things up here to offer for your wedding. We have a barn where you can have your reception dancing in the auditorium in the schoolhouse. Uh, we actually already have two weddings already booked for 2021, so you do need to schedule your date soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Is happening.